Hello, mate, and welcome to Australia and the Pacific. Crikey! All right, I'm not going to talk to you this whole time in a bad Australian accent, because it was bad. But we are going to talk about Australia. Well, not just Australia, but New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and other Southern Pacific Islands. We're on page 834 of your textbook. Turn there. Page 834. Yeah, yeah. What do you know about Australia and the Pacific? Do you have any idea the climate they have down under? What landforms would they have? Well, hopefully you'll have a better understanding after the first section on physical features. If you look on page 828, you can see the numerous amounts of islands that make up this region. This region is made of tens of thousands of islands that cover a long piece of area in the Pacific. Because remember, the Pacific is the largest ocean we have, and these islands are scattered all throughout. Some of these islands are big, some of them are small. Australia is on the southwest edge of the Pacific Ocean between Southeast Asia and Antarctica, and it is the largest country in this region. I have my globe. We're going past Africa, and we can see Australia. But you have to understand, this region includes not just Australia, but all of this as well. So it's a big region. No, I dropped my globe. A lot of water. A lot of water. The Pacific region consists of three subregions, and those, I'll write them down for you, are Melanesia, Micronesia, and the biggest one. Polynesia. So three subregions Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Australia is completely surrounded by water and is considered to be Earth's smallest continent, but it is by far the biggest landmass in the area. Australia has wide, flat stretches of dry land, making wildfires happen quite easily. You know, before we had this really bad coronavirus, in late 2019, Australia actually had really bad wildfires. Um, and its wildfires are very common in Australia as well. These wide stretches of land in central and western Australia, um, sorry, these wide stretches of land are in its central and western portions of Australia. The inside of Australia is called the outback outback and is not inhabited by a whole lot of things. Not a lot of people live in the inside of Australia. They live on the coast. We've heard that before with a lot of countries. The coast is the place to live. Um, and there's low plateaus and plains. Inside the outback is the Uluru or Ayers Rock and is a popular Aboriginal and tourist location in the middle of Australia. After this video is over, I want you to go onto Google Earth and I want you to look up two things. And one of those is the Ayers Rock or Uluru. Um, it's a very mystical place for the Aboriginal people, but it is also a pretty big tourist location. It, it looks like a huge rock just in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't even look like a mountain. Um, Central and Western Australia have three large deserts. The Great Victoria Desert, the Great Sandy Desert, it's an original name for a desert, Great Sandy, and the Simpson Desert. Eastern Australia is covered by low mountains, valleys, and rivers. Most people live on the coasts in Australia, and the land there is also fertile. Sydney, for example, the biggest city in Australia, is located on the coast. It isn't the capital of Australia, though. Do you know what the capital of Australia is? Besides land, 
Australia is known for the world's largest grouping of coral reefs. A coral reef is a formation of rock-like material made up of the skeletons of tiny sea creatures. This area is called the Great Barrier Reef and it is more than 1,250 miles long. It is a popular place for surfing and scuba diving and is the habit, habitat for a lot of different species. People have been worried about conservation of the Great Barrier Reef as the amount of coral they've had is diminishing over the years because the water temperature is getting too high for the coral to survive. Um, this is making people nervous because that's causing creatures to go extinct because a lot of unique creatures call the Great Barrier Reef their home. Can you find the Great Barrier Reef near Australia on page 835? Can you? It is right here. After this video, I want you to look at the Great Barrier Reef on Google Earth. There's actually some pictures where they are underwater and you can see it. It's very beautiful. If Mrs. Bulwark weren't afraid of fish, maybe she'd want to see it one day, but I'm fine just looking at it online. At this point, I wanted to introduce something new, a new segment. So I don't know how many people actually listen to these videos or watch them and how many people just click like, I watched it, and they didn't actually watch it. So in order to do that, I am introducing Dutch word of the day. I know that some of you are interested in learning some Dutch. I know we've learned some Spanish um, in geography class as well. So I thought I would teach you Dutch words at the, of the day and at the end of the week, you should be able to say a sentence. So make sure you write this word down. It will be on your homework. This is the Dutch word for Tuesday. It's ick, like something is icky but it doesn't mean gross or icky. It means I, not I, but I as in me. So, and I'm saying I, I say ick. Can you say it? Ick, ick, ick. Good, keep working on it. Make sure you write this word down so you remember when you do your homework what the word of the day was. Back to Australia. I actually taught someone who was Australian in Suriname and he would say I was probably doing an awful, awful accent. Um, Australia, like I said before, is only just one part of this area that we're going to be learning about. There is a subregion called Melanesia that is to the east of Australia. These islands go from Papua New Guinea in the west to Fiji in the east. Melanesia, Melanesia is densely populated, despite being made up of a whole bunch of different islands, different islands. On my globe, there's a label for Melanesia. It's right here. So this area is considered Melanesia. You can even see it on the map on page 835, the area that would be considered Melanesia. To the north of Melanesia are 2,000 small islands. This region is called Micronesia. It makes sense that it's called micro because micro means small, Micronesia. 2,000 small islands. Most of these islands, almost all, are made of coral and have sandy beaches. You can also see this region on page 835. Do you see it? Islands included in this are the Marshall Islands. A lot of the islands that are there are too tiny to be put on a map. Some of them are really, really tiny, which is why it's called Micronesia. The third and largest subregion in the South Pacific is Polynesia. Maybe you've heard that before, Polynesia, or if you've heard of Polynesian dancers. This region forms a rough triangle and includes New Zealand and Hawaii in it. That's right, 
Hawaii. We've heard of Hawaii before. We're not going to talk about it in this chapter because Hawaii is part of the United States, but it is in the region that is called Polynesia. Remember, the Pacific Ocean borders the United States and is in this region as well. If we look at my globe, we see Australia. But if I keep spinning across the Pacific Ocean, we run into North America and South America. I spun the wrong direction. <laughs> we keep going across the Pacific Ocean. I'm trying to talk while I don't look at my globe. We run into North America and South America. So Hawaii is located right here in the middle of the, of the Pacific Ocean. And New Zealand is all the way at the bottom of the globe, right here. So we have this triangle that is formed from Polynesia. We have this triangle and it is the biggest subregion that we're going to talk about. And the islands are very spread apart from one another. It is these islands and the culture that is in these islands that inspired the movie Moana. Have you seen Moana? I have. I loved it. Islands in Polynesia are divided into two distinct types, high islands and low islands. High islands are mountainous rocky and volcanic and have fertile soil. Low islands are just above sea level and have poor sandy soil and little fresh water. Many of those low islands are called atolls or ring-shaped coral islands enclosing a body of water, keeping a water inside of it. You can see a picture of an atoll on page 836. Let me flip my page there. You can see the coral reef surrounds an inner portion of water. Hey, if you have seen Moana, do you remember what Moana's home island looked like? The island that she was supposed to be the ruler of? Was it an atoll or was it a high island? Yes, it was an atoll. Because remember, Moana's father did not want her to leave or go beyond the reef and didn't allow anyone to fish beyond the reef to get out to the ocean. So if you watch Moana again or at the beginning, look at that island and see how it is an atoll island. Now, how do atolls form? I'm on page 836 at the bottom. It says, the diagram below shows how an atoll is formed. An atoll begins as a coral reef around a volcanic island. Or picture number one. The coral builds as the island wears away over time, so the island goes down. Finally, only a ring of coral remains. So eventually all of that land, they say, will be worn away. It reminds me a little bit of the I Lava You movie. I think I played that for you guys this year. Um, maybe in science class. And that ends this first section. We're going to talk about um, plate tectonics and climate tomorrow. If you want to work on your homework, we've actually answered a lot, a lot of questions today. We've answered questions 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, and 11. I know, we were on it. Don't forget the Dutch word um, as well. And after this, go look at stuff on Google Earth. Go look at the Great Barrier Reef and go look at Uluru as well. Just get an idea of those physical features. Good day. Bye.